Hello. This afternoon, I'm going to give you a very brief introduction to Roman clothing, and then we're going to try some weaving. All Roman clothing was woven. In this famous monument, the Arapakis, you can see a family, men, women and children, processing in their best clothes. And you might notice that the clothes are long and draped and wrapped around the body. This is because the clothes are woven. Nowadays, most of our clothing is actually knitted. This is a different system, which although it only requires two sticks to make, was a technology that the Romans didn't invent. It comes as a system of loops which interlock. You can see the close up of a piece of knitting on the right, and hopefully you can see the little loops in there. And if you've got a smartphone, you might be able to look at your own clothing and work out whether it's knitted or woven. When we think of knitting, we often think of fair isle jumpers, like this famous one worn by King Edward VII, or some famous archaeologists are known for their bright coloured knitwear. But actually, most of the clothing you wear today, your t-shirts, your leggings and your sweatshirts, will all be knitted rather than woven. Weaving is a very different system. It's a system of threads, one of which is tensioned, that is tight. This is the warp. And the other system weaves in and out, over and under the first. This is the weft. On the right, you can see a close up of a piece of weaving. And hopefully you can see the difference between this and the previous knitting. Nowadays, weaving is seen in shirts and suits and often in dresses. Although in fact, one of these dresses is knitted. I wondered if you can tell which one that might be. Romans did their weaving. They used a warp weighted loom, so called because the tension of the warp, the vertical threads, is held by these clay weights. Clay weights can come in all different shapes and sizes, but their job is always the same. They are to pull the warp tight. Luckily for Roman weavers, clothing shapes were very simple. This is a child's tunic woven by some weavers at Xanten in Germany. And you can see it's a simple oblong. It's been woven horizontally on the loom, taken off, turned round 90 degrees, and simply folded in half and sewn up the sides with a slash made for the neckline. So it's a very simple tunic. But what you can see in the close up on the right is that the yellow stripes are woven into the garment. They're not added on afterwards. They're all part of the original weaving. If we return to the monument, one of the other things you will notice if you look at uh, Roman statues in museums is they all tend to be rather white. But in fact, Roman clothing could be quite colourful. And again, Roman weavers showed off their cleverness. These are surviving archaeological textiles which show patterning. And if you look very carefully at this patterning, you will see that it's woven into the textile. It's not added on like applique or embroidery, but it's woven at the same time as the body of the garment is made. So the Romans could wear lots of colour. Now, let's have a go at our own weaving. For this, you need very simple bits of equipment that hopefully you'll have around the house. But we use a paper plate to create the loom and you can use all sorts of pieces of material to create your weaving. You will need a pack of paper plates, some scissors, glue, some various yarns, ribbons, bits of elastic, beads, anything will do, and a blunt needle. For a circular weave, which is the first one I'm going to show you, you need to cut, mark and cut an uneven number of notches around the edge of the plates.
Cut the notches to about two centimeters depth into the edge of the plate and then hold your warp yarn and thread it from the back of the plate through to the front through the first notch, pull it across the front of the plate and thread it through the opposite notch on the other end of the plate. So your first warp thread should now be across the plate. For your second thread, you pass the warp across the back of the plate so that it comes out onto the front in the notch next to the one you've just threaded it through. Then you pull the yarn across the front of the plate again, inserting it in the notch opposite to one side of your very first thread. The back will only look like a simple stitch where the front will have the threads crossing the front of the plate. You carry on like this until you've used up all the notches. Don't worry if the threads don't quite meet in the middle, we can sort that out once they are all attached. Once you've threaded through all the notches, you will have one thread that won't have an empty matching notch. With the front of the plate facing you, Take this last thread to the centre of the plate, gather all the threads together and tie your loose thread around them to keep them tight and to give you the nice spiral pattern that you see in the picture here. So the front of your plate should now look like the one on the left and the back of your plate should just have simple stitches on. You are now ready to weave. This is the exciting bit. Take your first colour, this is your weft, cut a length of about 30 to 40 centimetres and thread it through your needle. If you don't have a needle, you can still weave by winding the warp up into a little ball. Notch your thread in the centre of the warp and then you are ready to start weaving. To weave, simply wind your thread over and under each alternate warp thread. Start quite loosely and push the threads into the center, gently pulling more tightly as you go. If you've something slim and pointy to do this with, to do the pushing into the center with, that helps. A pencil will do it, a knitting needle, a kebab stick, or even the needle that you're using to thread your yarn with. As you build up your rows, you'll be able to tuck your starting knot into the end of the weave to hide it. This slide shows the weave building up and it shows on the left the starting knot tail still sticking out and on the right you can just see that the tail has been tucked underneath and the weave passes over the top of it. After this you simply keep weaving round and round. It's very easy to change colours by simply cutting off one colour and introducing a new one. You tuck the cut end of the first yarn and the starting end of the new yarn under the weaving and remember to keep to your over and under pattern. So carry on with the new yarn. Be careful not to pull too hard at first otherwise it will come out but after the first round the tension of the weaving will hold the new colour secure. Remember you don't need to use although you can make pretty patterns with just wool here's an NHS rainbow but you can also use ribbons, you can use beads, you can use bits of rag, bits of raffia. Almost anything that you can weave in and out can be used to create a good effect. Once you've got really good at the weaving, there's also lots of different patterns you can try. You could try just making a semicircle or you could try making a tree by gathering up the top yarns and only doing two or three across the bottom of the plate to create the trunk. There's lots of ideas on YouTube if you really enjoy doing this sort of thing. But before I finish, I'm just going to show you one last method. This uses the plate more like a traditional loom and gives you a piece of vertical weaving. In this, you cut lots of little edge, lots of little notches across the top and the bottom of the plate. And then in the same way as you wound up and across and down again with the circular weaving, 
you weave you weave your warp down across the plate round the back of the plate and up through the separate knot the next notch for this weave if you look closely you can see that i used alternate colors in the warp this makes it very easy to see whether i should be going over or under in my weft to start your weaving you simply do it in exactly the same way as you started your circular weaving you pass over and under, over and under. And on the second row, you have to make sure that you go under the thread you went over and over the thread you went under. I hope you enjoy your weaving.